stop just up ahead. Danger. You are prepared. Don't put away your friend. Your weapon. Snowflake spec the barrels of your VA's 9mm pistol. Yes, I hear commotion. Let's go. Good. Be ready to take damage. I'm all out of shit to give, loincloth. Welcome to the fucking reckoning. Put your damn gun down. People are gonna get hurt. We need to talk this through. All right? Shut up! You're not gonna talk yourself out of this, loincloth shit fuck. This is the mercenary at the gates. His chest rises and falls under the ceramic breastplate. His fingers reach for the butt of his sidearm. There's something very wrong with him. Shh. This is a misunderstanding. Nothing irreversible has happened yet. You can just return to your unit and forget all about this. The Kipt is merciful, willing to spare us if we just forget about our murdered and humiliated commander. I think we should just kill everyone, Corti. You are all drunk. Come to your senses. You won't gun down seven people in the middle of the street? This isn't a frontier town or a jungle outpost? Easy, Lizzie. Let me handle it. I know guys like this. I'm sure we can come to a peaceful agreement. Ain't that right, fellas? He is facing overwhelmingly superior firepower. And he knows it. Peaceful. Nest in your abdominal cavity like a little wild mouse. The masked man's words are barely intelligible, but you can hear them. Fuck, there's the third one. How did we miss something like this? This third one, he is the most dangerous of them all. Heavily armed. The lieutenant is genuinely worried for his life. You should consult him before getting in there. The mercenary tribunal. My plan is not to get killed, but we have to intervene. He doesn't want to, but he must. If this turns into a firefight, we should take him out first. A sound strategy. He's the leader. Get lost, comedian. You cops had your chance. Now it's fucking time for some justice. I think he's calmed down a bit. No, he didn't. He's about to open fire. You can't think that way now. This is serious. Pig, fuck! Oh, people are gonna die today. We're not leaving it like this. These tribals hung him up for everyone to see. No one is going to kill anyone. Let's just put the guns down and talk like civilized human beings. She doesn't seem to understand the severity of the situation. With a wordless gurgle, the killer loads his long rifle. The leader gives a small nod to the helmeted man. Suddenly, the grip of your sidearm feels comforting and warm in your hand. Feels like it's saying, do it. Shoot him in the mouth. 
shoot him before he shoots you. No, wait. It's good you have that gun. It really is. Just soften him up first. Present an argument. If you waste time, people will die. No, we can do this. Drag it out a bit. Get under his skin. I don't know about this getting under his skin. What if he gets under yours? I'm barely keeping your hand from trembling here. Peace. Always peace. It has worked thus far. Start with the first idea you have, then move down from that. Please. Whatever you do, stop wasting your time thinking about it. Rude. Rude is the killer. Rude, the killer, Hoan Cloven. He doesn't talk much. All of you cunts inside out. Rip you open. Perhaps it's for the best. Him not talking too much. The gunner. The raddest. The killer. What do you think he does? There, on the rim of Owen Clerven's helmet, you count little stick figures, 19, 20, 21. About 50 little stick figures, all of them black, plus two little white ones in the end. These men served in Semini, the native islanders. The two little white figures in the end are from when they moved to Rivershaw, their recent. That's right. Plenty of kids here in Revachal, too. T, let's fucking do it. T. Now, now is the time. Stop waiting. Easy, easy now. Yeah? Who did? You should implicate yourself. Throw yourself onto the embrasure. Chest first. No, wait! He didn't. He is tense, like a steel spring under full load. You think this is funny? What if I just shot one of your pals here for fun, huh? How about the kit? That'd be fucking funny. Listen, please. This cop and this drumhead court marshal won't decide who... He's gonna do it. He's gonna shoot her. The Hardy Boys confessed to hanging him all together. Titus said, we took him out back and hanged him. He said it loud, in a public place. You're lying! DePaul heard it. A Keel Model 40 revolver, eight rounds in the barrel. The gun slowly sways in his hand from the inebriation. You heard wrong. She and these men have been helping us find the shooter. The shot rings in your ears, a low tinny ring. Then the Hardy Boys yell something. The young woman stands and looks behind her. The shot has flown over her head, crashing a small pane of the glass window behind her. I missed. Not true. He purposefully overaimed and shot the window. You had him second guessing himself. Only for a second. Do not assume you will miss the next time. I know what I heard, Corti. They said they killed him. They said it was a good way to end a Sunday night. That doesn't sound good. You need to change the topic now, or there will be another shot. 
What topic? Shots have been fired. Act before it's too late. This was a close call. Yes. So what? Yeah? So what? You should be drunk too. It's insane how long it's been since your last drink. Get one in you right now. Exactly. This is so horrible. People are gonna die whatever you do. It will be all your fault. Only a drink will soothe this. Keep thinking about the drink. Shut up. Let him think. Too much is on the line. He's not gonna fuck it up because of you. I won't let you. Nah. I'm clear as day. Fucking government ordained super soldier. He must be tweaked off too. With something other than alcohol. They always are. Enough already! What is this?! We didn't come here to fucking chat! Interrupt me again and I will execute you on the spot, Lance Corporal. Now, you got them both off piste. He's foaming mad at her. You think I care what that company cunt thinks? <laughs> He isn't just boasting, he really doesn't care. Back out of this now, or it'll get bad. Fucking waste this fuck! Ignore her. She's not the main threat, yet. All right, here we go. This is an illegal tribunal. Krenner would never sanction this. Who's the commanding officer? Take your pick. I have some trivia, too. Get him interested in facts. Really, none of this looks like it's going to do anything but piss him off. You only have time for one argument. Choose wisely. I am a Grinnell Major with over 15 years of live combat experience. When my colonel gets hanged by clay monkeys, I lead the platoon on a retaliation strike. Nah, I just have the biggest gun. Technically, the other man has the biggest gun. But we're beyond that now. King Reaper. You're right, but you see, I want it to end in bloodshed. Okay, it's not much, but he's thinking about something else, and his hand is off the gun. This did something. Now fire. Fuck them up. Do it. The muscles on your back tense up. Dangerous. Ask about him first. You don't want personal facts about his dead friend coming out of your mouth. He has to start it. Yeah, I don't fucking act so well. Lely had a hard on for making faces with you natives. Fucking food aid shit. That shit is done now. Trigger time. Sergeant Major Raoul Cortiner. Reporting in to burn this fucking mud hut to the ground. As he moves, the interlocking pieces of his armor click softly. Click, click, click. A realization comes to you like a picture puzzle coming together. His name is Raoul Cortenar. The dead man's name is Elise Cortenar. He's brothers with the deceased. No, 
probably foster brothers. Elise was put into a foster home, remember? For killing, maiming, and humiliating our commanding officer. All sentenced to death by lead. He sways from left to right, inspecting you. He wasn't my fucking brother. We just grew up on the same farm and got beat into place by the same sick fuck. Beaten by a foster parent or someone on the farm? Same fucking mud hut town, too. Okay, good. Who? Laylee. We researched him. We contacted the ICP and looked at his birth records. That was in there. And other things. They fucking put Laylee in a leaf compactor. And now these cunts finished the job. There's real anguish in his voice. A drunken sadness suddenly engulfs him. Memories. It's a mind fuck, Corti. He wasn't put in a leaf compactor. They're making it up to fuck with us. Major permission to. Open fire. We can't have that. Interfere now. Fuck do you mean, talker? We've heard testimony. People say he was charismatic. A nice guy to be around. Yeah. He liked to chat up the natives. Share leaflets. Squeeze a bit of kicked ass here and there. Great fucking idea that turned out to be. If Laylee was here, he would spare the lot of you. Maybe shoot one for sure. But me? I'm not a big fan of public affairs, Clay Monkey. I'll gun every one of you down for what you did. Ready to open fire, Major. At your command. This one isn't used to being suited this long. She's uncomfortable. We'll open fire just to hurry things along. Our colonel did what he had to do. It was either one cunt or a hundred of them. Rude here. In your ship pipes, right in the fucking. He likes to fire mortars at random coordinates. Wipe out mud huts like that. When he gets bored. Lady knew how to command. He was a good commander. I can see you miss him. Oh yeah. He would have commanded this fuck hell way better than I did. That didn't happen. Because hey see Bill and Kipty the Kipped here. Fucking murdered him. Had him stink the village up for two weeks after. And you fucks. Listen, man. We told you we... Told us what? What did you say? Who said that? Tattoo fuck! You'll die first! Baby blue, yeah. Like someone fucked up and put a baby's eyes on a grown man. It was creepy. But bitches, bitches like that shit, I guess. Or, I don't know what bitches like. I just know how to mow down cloths. Find his killer. Cop. His killer stands right there. Shitting his pants. And you're standing in the way, protecting them. I know what this tactic is, Silo Sam. You're gonna die for them. Right here. Big talk, but that leaf compactor won't leave his mind anytime soon. It's a small thing, but it got him off center. Who the fuck is that? Classia, the woman upstairs. Where is she? She left! Unarmed, hunched, but keeping it together. What am I doing? My fucking establishment is under fire! You know how much windows cost? She left! Her room's cleaned out! 
right before these assholes showed up. We should have arrested her. You can feel how upset he is with himself. Just for a second. Then the fear takes over and he's back in the moment. Hey, Bushman! Your little cunt isn't gonna help you out of this one! She's gone. Forget about it now. Concentrate on this. A plume of smoke and fire erupts from the gun, and your hand goes numb from the explosion. I feel it in my fingers. I feel it in my toes. The smoke drifts west with the wind. You hear the plaza erupt in violence, slow, like a waterfall in reverse. There is a hole in his cheek. Blood gushes out as he stumbles backward, eyes filled with rage and disbelief, gurgling, muttering something unintelligible. His lips, moving, swollen with fear, are trying to say, shoot him, shoot him, but he can't. To your right, the killer raises his rifle and takes aim at you. His moves are steady, but the long barrel of the rifle sways slowly. An Easter ARFA-7, built for taking out light-armored vehicles. It will devastate you. A low shot rings. You feel a tapping, like rain on your chest plate. Heavy drops of rain. Then the sound of dice rolling, as the cuirass distributes the shot evenly from plate to plate. You got hit. The armor took most of it, but still your ribcage burns. Feels like blood is slowly seeping into your lungs. God, please. He's aiming for the eye slot in Rude's helmet. An extremely difficult shot. He has to. The rifleman will fire at you again. Two shots ring at once, one from the lieutenant's pistol, and the other from the balls. It's aimed at the lieutenant, but it misses. You hear a scream behind you. Blood gushes from the helmet's eye sockets as Rude staggers back, disoriented. The sounds coming from his helmet are not human. An unbelievable shot from the lieutenant. The helmet looks like the face of an ancient god of war, crying blood. Glenn, dying in a puddle of blood behind you. His mangled torso has two gunshot wounds. Blood gushes out of them like red geezers. Oh god, watch out. You see two crazed eyes stare at you through all the smoke and the panic. With blood gushing from his face, the man raises his pistol at you. Then he squeezes the trigger. The look of vengeance, framed in blood, lips shaking. This is the last thing he'll do on Earth. But he will do it. He is your end. Here it comes, death. You can't. There is no time. Something inside your pelvis explodes. Your entire lower body is on fire and your legs can't support you. You fall down like a rag doll. The Hardy Boys are screaming, fighting, dying. Someone jumps over you. Nearby gunfire shatters glass.
Protect the cop! He's down! Warm blood pools underneath you. It's sticky. And there's so much of it. You're bleeding like a pig. But the bullet seems to have gone right through you. Don't go into shock and you might make it. Don't go into shock. Hold on. Liquid parts mostly, and you're quickly running out of them. There is a major artery on the inside of the thigh. Nothing. A persisting darkness. Dancing lights of pain. Distant shadows cast by them, like a hellish play. You're bleeding out. Stay with me. Yes, keep talking. You hear me? Stay awake. But you can't. It's so hard. Your eyelids grow heavy, and the sounds ever more distant. And a cold comes over you. The lieutenant, too, is somewhere far away. Almost gone. When suddenly, you sense something behind him. A slender white shadow towering. Someone stands there, raising her pistol at him. The lieutenant does not see it. He's pushing down on your wound with both hands. Scream immediately. He's gonna die. No, you scream. Behind you, from your bloody lips, your eyes are full of fear. There is no room for hesitation. The lieutenant turns around and fires his body falling on yours in the course of the motion. You hear a faint scream, a woman's. Then the sound disappears, like someone pressed stop on the tape. The woman is gone. So is Kim. Then the whole world. This is death. One more door, baby. He can't go. Not before the case is solved. There is a radio in the distance. A radio on a plane sound. 
Good morning, Elysium. Soon you will return. You're thirsty. Reach for the glass of water by the bed. The world is still there. Sleep some more. Hours turn to days. Soon we will get up again and go through it again, again. Finally, we know what the infernal engine was outside. The Clary. It was him. He is the infernal engine. He never stops. He only gets worse. Life gets hard, but we go on. You see the lieutenant's familiar shape in the orange jacket. It turns double, then triple, from the pain. It's nothing. You're alive. That's what matters. Sunrise, Arabellon. It's not ouch time yet. You just go to the Wamin pill an hour ago. Wait until it wears off. Drew, I mean. Then it's not that bad. Neither surgical nor organ damage bad, but still under the counter bad. Mr. Gart cleaned it. It took him an entire day. Two days, in and out. You've been up enough to take Drouamine and curse and drink water. Yes, the joke wasn't funny anymore. I took it off. The close proximity of death must have made the lieutenant contemplate his life choices. He's done with the jacket. Sunrise Parabellum. Sunrise, prepare for war. It's an old revolutionary thing. Isn't that written on you? It served you well. The gates of the harbor are boarded up. The streets are a little more empty. Apocalyptic violence is yet to erupt, I am relieved to say. I think we may have held it off, for now. Barely. Yes, we have also completely failed, but that's okay. What happened? You shot the Major in the face. A firefight ensued. Yes. You're a real killer, Harry. A bloodstained killer. As retaliation, the rifleman tried shooting you. He hit the cuirass. I heard it go off. I was looking for a clear line of sight to him. He sounds a tiny bit sorry. He did not find it before you got hit. I shot and wounded him, while Glenn took a bullet in the spine. It was meant for me. He did not survive. This is not the first person to die in his place. He goes on. Titus, Fat Angus and Theo charged. Angus and Theo did not make it. They both died before they made it to intensive care. Titus survives. So do Alain and the musician. I forget his name. Yes, he's still alive too. You were bleeding out by then. I think you said something about your wife and you warned me. I was able to disarm one of them, the pole, before she got a jump on me. Thank you. I killed her. And that's what happened. This is the one. The pole was the last to die. Everhart had their bodies returned to Connell for a funeral. The company is yet to retaliate. Because we deterred them? Or Joyce did? Maybe the harbor in full lockdown is too costly a target. Or maybe... Maybe they are simply taking their time and will attack soon. I don't know. 4. Glenn, Theo, Shanky and Angus. The fat one, he took a lot of bullets. All.
Let's face it, officer, and this is both of our fault. It could have gone a little better. Six people are dead. But what's done is done. The violence is cordoned off. The Hornet did not get into the Beehive. The worst scenario has not materialized yet. And we are still alive, both of us. He did not expect you both to survive once you stepped between those two armies. His smoking, his hunched back. You have it worse, but he took a real beating. That cigarette has medicinal purposes. Reasonably bad. You were shot in the left quadriceps. That's your tie. It appears no major arteries were nicked. The bullet was removed and a bacterial infection treated with mercurochrome. The bruising in your shoulder is negligible. The armor took the brunt of the fire. We will see. With considerable pain and the stitches tearing every now and then, you should be able to do it. No. A man and a woman sit in the front seat of an armored motor carriage. The woman is driving. The man lights a cigarette. Jean Vicmer is his name. The asphalt vanishes under the wheels of the machine. Ahead, harbor cranes rise to the sky. Back to that shithole, he says. I called your station after the fight. The injury was logged in. They told me they've sent officers to join you on the site. I'm sure they're worried about you. That means he hasn't seen them around while you were out. They're not really worried about you. If they were, wouldn't they be here? I don't know. He may have some idea, but he's not gonna get into it with you. That's between you and them, he thinks. I did. No need. Not very. I have a concussion from that woman beating me with the butt of her gun. I try to not move too much. Things would be worse if you didn't warn me. Thank you. I did not see her coming, stupid of me. Easy now. You can take it. Just don't lean on that leg of yours too heavily. Your balance is way off. You feel like you're about to fall over on that thing. How are you? Your disco days should have been done quite a while back, Lieutenant Ephrater. I honestly don't know. Do you? Because we can't talk to Evrart. The harbor is in lockdown. Everyone in there is outside our grasp now. And Joyce has left too. Yes, she left yesterday morning. To meet the board of Wild Pines. Oh, that is what I've heard. There's a pin somewhere in the machine that keeps Connell from sending in a death squad. Maybe it's her. Maybe she kept her hand. Either way, Ruby's gone. And Classio too. We really should have arrested her, you know? Guard confirmed she left 20 minutes prior to the tribunal showing up. I don't know. I think your incredibly dangerous theory about you being the killer was incorrect, however. There is not one piece of evidence to support it. Honestly, I think our investigation has not produced a single credible suspect. Don't be narcissistic. Half the cops in Revachol West are his peonies. Even if you are, it is not a decisive factor in this case. That does make some sense. What? Every piece of garbage in the city is not connected to the case. You don't have to keep everything. He's wrong. Okay. I don't know. That's been there for years. Yes. God cursed the footprints, not solving the case for us. Au diable. We should go upstairs, rethink the ballistics in situ. I agree with this. 
What else? See? There's that. You can do ballistics. It's extremely easy. There are thousands lying around. We found one. All completely unusable. It's precisely how easy it is to find one that makes the bullet useless. We could find thousands more if we wanted. All of Revachol is full of them. But they seemed so mysterious. No need to be melodramatic. What is? Something. I'm afraid we may not be able to locate communism, detective, on account of it being dead. Ideology does not have anything to do with the murder investigation at hand. I'm sorry, it does not. He arches his brow. The ceiling fan patiently spins overhead. It really is very hard. He sounds surprisingly weary. That concussion must be making him dizzy. No. Are you ready to limp? Good. Where do you want to limp to? A gust of wind blows in from the bay. The Duraluminium box around you vibrates imperceptibly. A familiar cold, a red thread on the roof upstairs. Taut, plucked like a string by the gust. Why not? Another look at the window, perhaps? The one he was shot through. I don't know. I can't think of anything better. What's this? We're getting reports of normal, reasonable, temperate, political opinions somewhere in Martinez. The air suddenly feels calmer, more transparent in a strangely tender way. Perhaps it's the hangover. Perhaps it's a temporary surge of serotonin. But something tells you. It's time to become a citizen of the Kingdom of Conscience. I knew we could trust you. Remember, real democracy is just around the corner for Revachol. When that real democracy kicks in, we are all going to be so much happier. <laughs>